greetings. We'll give folks a few more minutes to be able to come on in. Good morning. Just holding for like a few more folks to be able to join. That is all. All right, with um, Cornelia coming in, that gives me quorum. So, hooray. I will go ahead and kick us off because we've got a lot to do today. Welcome to your TOC meeting for March 15th, 2022. Normal antitrust policy applies here. You have made it to the meeting. Well done. Or you're watching it on the recording. TOC members tracked over in the TOC attendance tracker in the public doc. And here we go. We have our annual reviews. This is the first time that we've done this in an open meeting. So bear with us. There might be some questions around how we all do things. There's um, some pieces in the annual review process about how three particular TOC members need to be able to vote for it. I think we deal with that at the end. Unless Dims, I see you nodding and being able to have like other, other opinions. But I know, I just go, go for it. I mean, okay, nope, that's basically like that. There's some procedural things that I know that we need to work out, so I will get us started in here. Um, what we've done as far as like TOC, kind of like reviewing all of these annual reviews is each individual project that came in for this morning, because um, we were doing this last week and a little bit yesterday, has a TOC kind of sponsor attached to them then they've gone through and actually reviewed. So as we move towards each of them, I will pass towards that particular member. If I see them here, if they're not, I'll take it. So. Um, with that, I'm going to pass us to Kuma, and Emily is one big running with Kuma on this one. Hello, everyone. Um, so thank you so much for submitting your annual review. We've gone through and taken a peek at it and also um, checked some status information about the project. Looks like you all have been making some excellent work on uh, getting adopters of the project. Um, wanted to understand a little bit more of your perspective on some of that adoption. Do you see any challenges or any um, opportunities over the next year? If Kuma is on the call and can answer. I'm not currently seeing anyone from Kuma on the call. Okay. There's a lot of folks running around in here. so. Um, this is one of the things we can kind of like ask uh, afterwards. Um, okay. Up to you. I guess we can ask it afterwards. So okay. uh, looks like widespread adoption. Um, 
they had some key call outs for things that they wanted to get done before incubation. So in addition to those, um, based off of a review of the repository, there looks like there could be some more work that could be done um, to better prepare the project for all of the requirements that come with incubation and all of the additional um, exposure and opportunity with that. So um, I'd be happy to follow up with Kuma offline after this to discuss what some of those key items are that I think would be beneficial for the project to be able to move forward. Um, and it looks like they had some outstanding requests of CNCF to be able to um, assist the project in, in their readiness for incubation. Is there anything else that I missed, Amy? Or Dems? Um, I, I had a question about one thing on the slide, uh, which was uh, we don't do any sort of tracking of uh, you know where things are installed or used um, is right now. So I don't know if there is precedent in our community to be able to do that. Um, so there is. Um, so there is. we do have the ability to be able to go through a telemetry policy and kind of walk this through legal and all of that. So if projects want that, um, uh, the best example that I have for you right now is, uh, I think it's a Spinnaker project. Um, mm -hmm. Don't quote me on that directly because I haven't looked at this in a bit, but we do have a policy and projects can go through this. Okay, perfect. Yep. Yeah, let's... There, the link's over in chat if you're curious about this and you wanted to be able to like, you know, figure this one out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it would be interesting to have something for us which will work based off uh, what is in the LF1, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Right. Last call for anyone from Kuma. If you have uh, on the call. E e Emily, um, did you already leave some quest some of these questions uh, in their PR? Uh, Not calls? yet. I'm going to be um, following up probably with the community directly instead of on the PR because some of them are outside of the annual review comments and the discussion that's there. But I wanted to follow up um, with Amy just to make sure that I've, I've hit all the buttons that I need to. Yeah, this is Sounds intended to be a lightweight just review, um, intended to be like, hey, project, how can we help with? Um, one note, if a project asked for marketing help directly, I didn't put it in the slides because that's not something we can offer for sandbox projects. I, I fully understand where the request is coming from and there's, it's just not available, so. Oh, Amy, right. by this yes. time, all of them should have access to service desk at least, right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, everybody's got access to service desk. They can come by and ask us questions or any of that. Um, anything that they're really like, like super fired up about, um, I'm going to ask them to put it in the service desk so I can track it and get it to the appropriate team member. Perfect, thank you. So, yeah, no worries. All right. Okay, open crews. I cannot remember who had open crews. I know it's one of you. Harry. Harry, I know you're on the call. Where you were? Hello, can you hear me? Hello, come on in, Harry. Yeah, so um, as they will summarize on the Open Cruise project, um, this project uh, in general is growing as fast uh, in terms of the open source community. Uh, as we can see, it's in, uh, in its adoption. Uh, they, they have the adoption documentation, which has um, very diverse adopters. Uh, I mean, companies from both China, US, Europe, they're trying to, uh, they have adopted this project in production, which is very good sign, including several of the mainstream companies like Lyft, LinkedIn, they're all using Open Cruise to uh, solve the problems like how to deploy applications in um, web scale. This is also a good sign. And uh, when we look at the, um, implementations of details open course, I will say uh, it is on the right track by position by positioning itself as a, a tool set to help um, middle sized or large sized companies to deploy Kubernetes, to use Kubernetes at large scale by providing features like in place upgrades uh, to manage static cars at massive scale. These these are features which cannot be found in upstream Kubernetes, but still needed by many, many companies in their own user scenarios. That, that's why I feel it's uh, complementary to the existing community instead of saying a fork or 
I know people are asking why don't you contribute it back to upstream because the upstream had its own goal, had its own feature set. And those cases which has been handled by open crews mainly target on uh, massive scale, enterprise scale, you know, we should have some tools that will help that. Uh, so I, I feel that open is also on that track, on the right track on, in, the, in terms of that part. And the, the last is uh, the, the, the open course maintainers are also asking for a move to next, moving to next stage, uh, which I personally feel uh, they, 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 they are uh, the almost ready for that. Uh, I would like to see um, they improve the contribute, contributor diversity and, um, uh, to the further stage. Um, note that today they already have a diverse maintainership in the project. Uh, I think they are also in the right direction in this part. Yeah, this is the main summary from my side. Thank you, Harry. Any other comments from the group? Anything else that we wanted to be able to quick? I, I'm not actually seeing any of the open cruise folks online, so I'll hold for a moment for them. Uh, do we know which tag open cruise is under? It should be um, the tag app delivery. Okay, thank you. But also with the tag runtime, so it's kind of across two two different uh, aspects. Right. Thank you for that review. Any other questions? I will look forward to seeing their incubation request then. It sounds like that's where they're heading. Passing to Kyverno and Dim, you're up. Yes. Uh, hi. So Kyverno has been doing well. Um, you know, so Kyverno, uh, you know, they were looking at different statistics and stargazers, issue creators, committers, everything is going up, they have a whole bunch of committers from different companies. So that's a good sign. I, I, I believe they've also asked us to, um, they started the, the process for incubation, which is really good. Um, in general, uh, they have been trying to do the right thing uh, across uh, you know, what, what they do. Um, I did have a few questions in the PR itself and uh, Jim uh, from the project, um, you know, gave me the details. Like I was asking where are the design docs? Um, you know, what is a plan for, uh, you know, the salsa levels uh, that they were talking about um, for the security chain. Um, then the other one that I had a question about was, uh, um, Zoom, I think they are lying a little bit on things like uh, Zoom. Uh, they haven't switched over to a community uh, thing yet. They are still using the one from uh, the company um, that Jim represents. Um, so I think they I actually have think we fixed that, but I appreciate bringing it up. I'll check in on that one. Thank you. Yeah, uh, this was five days ago that he said that they haven't switched over yet. Maybe we have already minted one, but they just haven't updated their calendar. Um, it could be just that. Um, the one question that uh, you know they, they were facing about was like, how do they, um, you know, they, they are up against, for example, OPA folks, right? Like OPA is already established and it's used in CKS uh, and things like that. They were trying to figure out like, how do we go to the point where um, we are listed alongside of OPA in the various uh, uh, things that uh, CNCF does or the documentation or, uh, that we have in different repositories and things like that. Um, I think that's a fair question. And you know, I was gonna probably point out like, hey, uh, let's get you through incub incubation. And then as part of incubation, we'll, we'll work on these things. Uh, we'll identify a set of things to do and go around uh, you know, uh, getting uh, help from other people to go do that. Um, so I do not have any concerns at this moment. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, reviewing the, you know, incubation uh, uh, DD and other materials uh, for q &A. Thank you. Any questions, anyone? 
Anybody from, from the project, project here? Unmute. Yeah, go ahead. Anybody from the project here? Yes, uh, it's Shuling Zhao here. I'm from Kiruna community. Uh, it's actually my first time joining this meeting because I saw the message that you said uh, it's an open meeting. So welcome everybody to join. So that's why I'm here. And uh, I believe Jim already like answered most of your questions in that uh, annual review. And we're also working on the DD doc for the incubation application. And you know, happy to discuss any other like further questions offline. But regarding that Zoom link, we had like problem posting it or uh, like live stream it on the YouTube. So, any reference or the resources that I can refer to? Yes. To replace <laughs> I know that I've got an open loop with the project on this one. Um, I will wake that one up and give you the resources for how to be able to do all of that. So, sounds good. Yeah, totally fair. Um, let me go do that now. So, otherwise I won't forget. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, any questions for us uh, that you might not have um, added in the PR shooting? Uh, not at the moment. I'll, I'll, I'll post if I have any further questions uh, afterwards. But thank you so far. Uh, yep. Okay. Uh, Amy, we are ready to go to the next. Thank you. All right. Nope, that's perfect. So thank you. And and thank you to Project for showing on up. Yay. I wasn't sure if it was thank going you. to work and it did. Yeah. Nope, that is great. Um, Cert Manager, kicking on through here. I'll take that that's one. Ricardo, yeah. thank you. <laughs> okay, thanks. Uh, so uh, I went through uh, the review of the project. Um, it, the first item about adoption, it's quite clear that uh, the adoption is very neat to this project. Uh, the Slack channel has, uh, I think, over 6,000 members and uh, quite active. And the same is true for GitHub. Um, I would also highlight there, there was uh, an effort from the project to uh, move away from the Jetstack organization, GitHub and similar things. There was one item left, I think, which is a reference to Jetstack on the project website. Maybe we can, we can check that one as well. Um, but the, for the other th items here in this slide, um, the incubation process has uh, actually already started. So I think the due diligence and uh, the suggested security audit will, will help the project a lot. Um, a couple of items that uh, I went through, I, I, so I see Joachim is here, so maybe he can comment as well. But uh, uh, one thing that seems to have been done is improving diversity in maintainers, but it's still like, maybe not where, where, where the project would like to be. So maybe my question would be, is there something we can help uh, in that process? Um, then small things are, uh, uh, even if there's a huge adoption, the users page in the GitHub um, doesn't really reflect this. So maybe it could be updated. And I think the roadmap uh, as well could, could get a, a quick update. Um, they mentioned also in the annual review that they would like uh, assistance from the CNCF uh, regarding their transition to use CNCF based infrastructure uh, and uh, also managing of uh, project life cycle uh, members uh, joining and leaving the project and getting credentials. Uh, so I guess the CNCF service desk is the best place to, to handle those. So probably that's, that's where things should be pointed to. I think that's all I have. Maybe Joachim, do you have any comments or anyone else? Uh, thank you, Ricardo. Um, so to address some of the points you mentioned on um, contributor diversity, for example, it's something that we discussed and we're working on lowering the threshold for contributions to make it easier for, for more people to, to open PRs and work with Cert Manager. Uh, we've also discussed how to um, add more information to, to our list of users. So we're gonna be a bit more proactive in reaching out and, and asking people to, to contribute specifically uh, to that list of, of, uh, of users of the software. Awesome. Yeah, I, I saw that the number of contributions is, is actually quite high for like uh, punctual contributions. Maybe, I don't know how to motivate people to become more active maintainers of at least parts of the project and engage a bit more, not an easy thing. Yeah, uh, agreed. 
Yeah, I guess the challenge is a cert manager works, uh, you know, very well. So people don't need, feel the need that they have to do more, I guess. Uh, but they don't see all the things, uh, you know, that could be done, I guess. Uh, they'll just see what, what doesn't work for them and have like a small patch for just that, right? Exactly. That's the kind of threshold we want to lower so that when questions come in, we can encourage them to, to open a PR themselves. So we want to make sure that threshold is very low to make it super easy to start contributing. Yeah, over, so, overall, there's a lot of process progress, so yeah, really nice to see. And Ricardo, hold that thought because I will ask you um, how you're doing on the due diligence for this particular project at the end. Um, yeah, so, so we had the kickoff meeting last hey. week and we already okay. have like the template documents and the first steps aligned. So we'll, we'll keep the regular meetings to, to, to move things forward. No, that's perfect. Um, uh, this is exactly what we would want to see for projects that are looking to be able to move to incubation. Like, please do your annual review, which shouldn't be that hard. Um, and it should actually give you a good guideline about whether or not you're ready to be able to go for incubation. So thank you, project. Anything else? All right, schema hero. And this one is Justin Cormack. Yeah. Um, Hello. So I think that the, um, you know, the most obvious thing looking at this project is that it's got little visible adoption. Um, they, um, they have an adopters file that only has replicated who originally donated the project and have all the maintainers still um, uh, in the in the adopters file. And there's not a lot of community activity in Slack or issues or PRs. Um, so the project really needs to work on, um, you know, working out why people are adopting it and um, helping them, you know, helping people get on board. Um, I, I think some of it is because people haven't heard of the project, maybe, but it's also, I think, partly because people probably already have homegrown solutions for this problem that they already have. Um, certainly, the, I was asking around internally at, at Docker, and that was the case with us. And I and they, I kind of pointed them a schema here and said, like, here's a tool you can um, look at instead of something homegrown. But I think that that's probably what the the competition is to some extent. Um, there's not been, I think the the roadmap's not been updated much since the project came into the sandbox and couldn't do use some work as well but I, I i feel that adoption is the main thing that this project needs to focus on really over the next few months and just try and um you know maybe just spend more time talking to users and finding out what the barriers to adoption are and um uh, um you know really treating it as a you know as a um you know as a time to spend you know spend time talking to users and work out work out if you're solving the right problems, why people aren't adopting um, and work on a plan, a plan to fix that. Yeah, absolutely, Cornelia. I, I totally agree that, that declarative scheme of migration is a fabulous idea. Um, so, you know, we have to kind of see why, why is this, why is this not getting any traction and um, how can we help and, and how can the, you know, how can the project engage more with with users and get them to understand how what a fabulous idea this is. Is anyone here from Schema Hero who'd like to speak? Yeah, hi Justin, I'm here. Um, I, I definitely hear what you're saying and completely agree with both points. Um, one that we need to really work on adoption we have a few folks that we're trying to get to list as the, in the adopters file, like they're early, it's still not a massive number, um, but that is our, our primary focus. And I think like more than adding new functionality in, like that is, has to be our focus right now. Um, and I think that's, yeah, like we called that out, I think also in like both in adopters and in like additional maintainers outside of the contributing organization here. Um, it just has to be a thing that, that we work on uh, right now.
Yeah, and I, th I think that, yeah, let, um, let's, spend, let's spend some time talking about it and working on working on strategy for, for what, because um, I'd, like, I'd you know, love to see what we can do to help you. Yeah, I mean, I think you, you hit kind of the, the challenge that we have right now where the, the folks who do see it, you know, have started to adopt it and, and, and they like it. It's slow traction for us right now. Um, but you know, nobody's heard of it yet. Even on this call, you know, we're seeing comments that people are, are seeing it for the for the first time. So, you know, it's uh that that's the challenge. And I understand that as a sandbox project, there's very limited, you know, marketing help that we're going to be able to get from the CNCF directly. So we um, you know, we we understand that that's the big challenge that we have ahead of us right now. Uh, I asked on the chat, uh, what's the closest alternative to Schema Hero? Is there one in CNCF or elsewhere? I, I, I do think that the, the, the competition is something you built yourself internally. Right. I mean, certainly, certainly when I asked internally, that's, you know, we've built, we built something that we've been using and is kind of, it kind of works ish, you know, and I think that's, that's probably I don't know, Mark, do you know any, anything that's directly? There's there's like tools um, like Liquibase, as an example, they have a commercial and an open source offering, you know, and we've actually spent some time talking to the, the team at Liquibase on how we can collaborate with existing tools that are out there um, to kind of bridge that gap for people who have already adopted um, tools. Um, yeah, Flyaway, there's also, you know, some tooling like, you know, Rails or Django have built in ORMs which handle it. So like that makes Schema Hero not really applicable to projects like that. And then, yeah, like, you know, we came from a background where we were writing Go code and we used like, like to, exactly what Justin's saying, homegrown solutions built on top of Goose and other open source repos that handle schema migrations, but not like a out of the box project. And certainly the reason that we decided to put it in the CNCF really was because there was nothing else in the cloud native landscape as a purely open source, open governance model that handles this problem very specifically. Um, Ricardo, if I like, can't just ask a question, if it's complementary or a replacement to liquid base, um, you know, I think it, it, it's definitely complementary. It could be a replacement for some specific use cases, um, but liquid base does more than Schema Hero does today. And so we think that there's like a potential you know, solution where it's complementary, where it handles the schema migrations and doesn't handle data migrations, getting in, really into the weeds on the, pro the project actually does. But there is, it, it's not an attempt to like replace a bunch of other tools that are out there. Like Schema Hero really is a very specific targeted like Kubernetes operator for deploying schema migrations. Well, hopefully we've picked up some adopters from this call. <laughs> I'd love that. <laughs> I, I, I guess the other question I have is like, where in a company's uh, uh, cloud native journey would they like look for, uh, you know, something, you know, that schema is, hero provides? Is it like early in the, or, you know, like, is it early, is it late? Um, so where we've seen early adoption is like when folks start really adopting GitOps as a deployment model where their CI process is like they're using Flux or Argo or some other GitOps tool to do it and they don't want an out of band schema migration. They want to like, like tightly couple those schema migrations in with the application deployment. It doesn't have to be late in the adoption. Um, you know, once you have Kubernetes though, it, it's, it's viable. So the, the follow-up to that would be like, do we need to do something with those projects so that you know schema hero will come up in the conversation when people are adopting the CACD uh, frameworks and trying to migrate applications there? Yeah, that's that's a great suggestion. We haven't talked about or thought about that yet. Like that's definitely a good idea. Okay, thank you. I had one other question before we moved on. Um, you had a note in here about being added into the certified Kubernetes like security specialist piece. Talk to me more about that. I think that was intended to be something like this, this the CKA exam, not the CKS exam. In okay, that, no, that's fine. I was just like, the, describe for yeah. me the wish more directly. Yeah, I think, you know, if, you know, one of our intents is like managing database migrations using control in, in Kubernetes native tooling is, 
that's one area that we we seem to hit a little bit of challenges with some folks where developers were managing database migrations and now if you have an, an SRE team or, or an ops team that's actually managing it because they're managing the cluster, you you shift the task of that and the ops team or the SRE team needs to be able to understand schema migrations a little bit more. So having a question or two or some kind of introduction to that topic exposes a Kubernetes administrator more to managing schema migrations. And also, honestly, like there was a big part of it for like, you know, just visibility about the project. Totally fair. That's why I was like, I need more context, I think. Um, yeah. no. Okay, I I will go ask like the team that does all of that, like what their cycle for being able to update things looks like. So thank you. Great. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Um, I'm actually going to move us like technically we should have Provega coming up next, but I don't have that particular TOC member on the call just yet. So I'm going to move us on to network service mesh and we'll come back as I see Aaron join. All right, so I was the one that read through the network service mesh docs. And to be honest, it looks pretty good. Like there's a good amount of diversity in maintainers and contributors. Um, there weren't really any asks from CNCF for the TOC. The team said that they were pretty happy with uh, the support they're getting. The biggest kind of concern is that there are things that they will get at incubation that they would love to get now. But I think that's a common concern of almost any sandbox project. Um, I think the most interesting conversation to have with network service meshes around adoption. And there were a few comments on adoption in the doc. And then I think Frederick is here and I think he's probably the best person to talk about adoption. I know that this conflicts with their weekly t uh, project meeting. So I wanna give him a chance to, to speak up since he skipped that to join us. Hello, thank you. So in, in terms of adoption, uh, to understand where we are, there's, there's a couple things that have to happen. So it's not like you just suddenly say, hey, there's an end user who wants to use it. They go and install it and then they, they move forward. So the adoption requires something that network service mesh itself controls. So in other words, if you, if you want to have a data plane or something hook up to it, uh, network service mesh would, inter would interface and interact with that thing. And then, uh, and then from there, the, the end user could then use that to coordinate very, multiple disparate uh, systems in, as, as if they were one thing uh, across vendors. And so, in terms of adoption, we've um, we've been working with a few with a few vendors. We have comments from both uh, Cisco, I think Cisco is a comment on there, uh, Ericsson, and uh, and Intel within the uh, within the within the uh, the review. Um, unfortunately, there's not much more I can say in there. What uh, what's what's in there is 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 uh, the the blessed approved versions. Um, uh, other, but I can say that there's there's a lot of active work going on in order to provide additional that additional vendor support. So uh, from the consumer side, and I come from a consumer company, uh, so I'm I'm at uh, at Anthem, and uh, we're we're looking at uh, at catching it on the other side, and we want us to look at uh, how do we install this on our systems in order to let it, allow us to automate several tasks that right now require. Uh, various uh, people and, and tooling and, and so on that it, in order to take tasks that, that often take months to do and to shrink it down into weeks or possibly uh, minutes worth of time once you get the initial the initial approvals so um, so on the on the end user side I'm also expecting some of the work as the vendors start to uh, start to come out of their uh, their development cycles and start pushing into the public, uh, I am expecting to see a lot more adoption uh, in in network service mesh uh, over over time as as those companies start to ramp up their uh, their uh, delivery of their of their various uh, things that they've been building. Uh, at least that's my expectation. Uh, does, does that help answer the question in terms of like like why we are where we are and where we're going? Yep. Yeah, at least to me that makes sense. And I hooked to Ed for a while yesterday because we had the uh, the TOC liaison uh, network uh, tag meeting yesterday as well. So I think all of my questions are answered. I don't know if anybody else, either from the TOC or anyone else on the call, has questions or if we're good to move on. Yeah, I, I had one. Um, so uh, it, like which 
industry vertical segment would like be a, a starting point like uh, i see ericsson here and i i see a few companies in the telco space is telco uh, uh, you know a starting point for people adopting nsm it's one possible starting point, but uh, I mentioned that I came from a from a consumer based uh, uh, CNC like, um, of consumer uh, point of view, and so Anthem is is uh, healthcare. So we're we're uh, I think in the fortune, top fortune fortune twenty five uh, uh, and are a healthcare company. So for for us uh, having something in it's not simply just like hey let's go target. Um, let's go target uh, telco. Uh, the, there's very, there's a very real use case around enterprise and automating various, uh, various uh, systems within, uh, with, within very enterprisey type systems. Okay, thank you. My pleasure. Any other questions for network service mesh? All right, I'm going to move us back to Pravega. Erin, passing to you. Hi, sorry. Uh, You're here. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and your mic works. Yay. Go ahead. All right. So uh, Pravega has actually had a really healthy uh, adoption and contribution since they first presented to the tag for Sandbox a while ago. I mean, they've had 76 different releases. They have had a very diverse set of contributors and customers um, adopting the technology. So what is Pravega? Um, I would say, you know, at a high level, it definitely is comparable to Kafka and Pulsar. You know, it's, it's a distributed messaging service uh, that works on streaming. I think it's pretty unique um, in terms of the different storage possibilities within the CNCF. So I like that it offers a little bit different uh, set of features um, that aren't typically available um, in our standard kind of storage solutions. Um, and so they have a diverse set of use cases that is continuously growing um, on the CNCF website. You can see, you know, kind of a comparison of the different features available between Kafka and Pulsar and how it differentiates, which I think is really important when we consider taking projects from Sandbox to incubation. That is one of the standards is how is this different? And it's clearly articulated through that. Um, you know, unfortunately, GitHub doesn't give you like a a year long view of how many contributions commits and things are going. So I think, you know, just triggering off the releases, I think we can conclude in the number of people who are contributing to it from a year ago that it is healthy. Um, it, there's a lot of interest and it's unique. Um, and so are there any questions? I know I went through that rather quickly. The only, uh, oh. the only thing that wasn't updated was um, not on the CNCF Provega site, but the Provega uh, project site, the roadmap seems to be a, a little bit lagging behind. So that would be one thing that I'd want to make sure is updated before we went further is to understand all the different things that they've put for different releases. How does that fit into the roadmap into the current timeline? Yeah, we've been pretty accurate on the roadmap, but, but yeah, I think we have the old version that shows some released uh, we'll get that updated real quickly. Great. Thank you, Derek. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. But other Derek, than that, here. I'm excited about the project. I actually was Great. in when it still was a SIG when you all presented and then became a tag. So um, I'm personally familiar with the project and I think it's has great momentum. Great. Thanks. It's good to hear uh, your perspective on that. There's several of us here too. I don't know if any of uh, the other steering committee members want to speak up. I just want to say, because I, I, I did the original Sandbox review for um, Provega, and um, I'm really pleased with the progress it's been making since it's joined the Sandbox, because I remember, you know, um, um, having those discussions with you, and it was a very early, you know, it, from the adoption point of view, it was very early stage back then, and um, I'm really pleased to see how it's coming on in the Sandbox. Yeah, I think our challenge is having um, qualified end users as adopters. So we have, you know, several vendors that, that have adopted or 
um, a lot of adoption is maybe early in the prototypal stages or you know we're seeing a lot of adoption in the flint community especially in china uh, but we need to see people get to production and then be willing to um, publicly acknowledge their use of Pravega. So that's, you know, as we head towards incubation, I think that's our, our roadblock right now. Anything else that we can hear from the project or just general questions? That was all I had, Amy, so. All right, thank you, Pravega, and thank you for dropping in. Move us back to Athens, and that, I believe, is Matt Farina. Unless he's dropped from the Yes, call. no, I'm oh, here. Oh, you're still here. here. Hello, I had hi. to go find that mute button. <laughs> Come on in. Unmute myself. Uh, hello. So um, Athens uh, deals with, um, well, authentication authorization stuff and uh, they aren't going for incubation anytime soon uh, so the project is mostly developed out of yahoo and yahoo japan which are two distinct uh legal entities if i understand it right and uh it's mostly works with azure and aws um, all their contributions come from these organizations in fact if i look at contributions for the last few months there hasn't been any from any other outside organizations, but it is actively developed by them and being actively worked on and used by them. Uh, it's one of those areas they know they need to improve on and they just started collecting um, uh, those who are actually using it. So they just started trying to collect that and get that information. Um, there is somebody, Vespa, who's looking at adding GCP support to work with their system. And so there might be some expansion there coming, um, but there is active ongoing development around it. Uh, they're just not seeing a lot of community growth and those other things put into it right now. In fact, if you go to the website, it reads a lot like a product thing without a whole lot that says, here's kind of how you get involved if you're gonna go um, contribute or be involved in that community. And I know we've got the project with us today, I think. Do we have them? I'd love to hear yeah. from you. Yes. Uh, hi, this is Abhijit. So I'm one of the contributors of Athens. Great. Or rather, maintainer of Athens. Fantastic. Uh, so yes, I as you had uh, rightly pointed out, adoption is something which we are going to concentrate on. And uh, so we have been working on a couple of features and uh, Athens is in the uh, security space for authentication and authorization. So the primary use case for it is the uh, service to service authentication. Um, so all the use cases for MTLS within Yahoo uh, is using Athens to do so. And in addition to that, Athens also provides uh, authorization using uh, OR2 standard based access tokens. So in a way, um, like just to give a little bit of context, it is uh, similar to Spire plus OPA uh, combination for like Spire for the X519 um, based authentication as well as OPA for doing the authorization based on policies. Thank you for the explanation. Is there anything else besides what we've got here that you can use from the CNCF staff or the TOC for the next year? Uh, no, I think uh, um, as we have men mentioned in the PR, we are going to go for uh, the security review and hoping to get more eyes on it in terms of uh, what project is and where we can improve. And uh, yes, I mean, I understand it being a sandbox project doesn't have direct marketing support, but we are going to see what we can do to get adoption going. Okay. That wraps up our kind of overall uh, reviews today. Um, Dims, I'm gonna pass to you a bit for like procedurally. Um, right, um, so we could uh, do it in a couple of ways. Uh, one way is um, to check if uh, any of us have any concerns about the projects that we've talked about right now. Uh, and if there are, uh, so we can, we can do like vote on bulk saying, okay, all the projects that were reviewed today, 
are good with a plus one, zero, minus one, or if you want to split it into individual ones, we can do that too. Uh, which one would the TOC members prefer? Any, any suggestions there? I mean, I think it's, we, we've done the bulk vote in the past. I mean, I think if the bulk vote, if there's not a plus one on the bulk vote, then we could always do them individually. But if there's a plus one on the bulk vote, then we can just go through and okay. get it, does it done. So let's call for a vote for a bulk approval uh, on all the projects that we have reviewed today. Vote is open. And passes. All right. Um, thank you. That was painless. That was wonderful. Um, we'll go through our projects applying to move levels now. Um, Harry, come on in for Chubau or Cube FS. Yeah, so um, all the re needed review and uh, due diligence work had to be finished. Uh, so the the Chubau FS, which is known as Cube FS today, uh, so this project is generally ready to move to incubation. Uh, so we are still waiting for some minor feedbacks from TOC side, but when everything's ready, I think this project, we can actually ask for um, public comment for their due diligence stock. Yeah. All right, I will watch for a uh, call for public comment. So, hooray. Um, Cloud Custodian. Yeah, so there was uh, a lot of progress here in the due diligence, and uh, I we, we, we will do a sync uh, on, on where we are and then an update in one of the next public meetings. But it, it's moving uh, pretty well right now. Should I, should I do the others? Yes, well? pass on to Volcano. Um, we've already talked about Cert Manager, so yay. Okay, yeah, no okay. infoning. Yay. Yeah, exactly. Elena is not with us today, but uh, this is her last meeting as a TOC member. Um, much thanks to, to Elena and all the work that she's done here. Um, Captain, pass to Cornelia. Yep. Um, we, I have feedback back, as I reported a few weeks ago. Um, I had given them the first round of feedback, and they have responded with that, and I need to review. Great. Thank you for the progress there. Dave, Artifact Hub. As I hunt to unmute. Um, oh, yeah, always. We have made almost no progress here. I think we talked a little bit uh, in December and January, and our plan was to have some conversations with end users and adopters of Artifact Hub as we're still kind of debating the, like, how well it fits the model of projects conversation that we had before. And I think that conversation was happening with Matt before Matt was on the TOC. So Matt and I just need to get together and figure this out and get to some of the next steps. All right, hearing no objections to that, um, pass to Key Cloak. So I'm in the similar situation as Dave. I think um, there were some reservations about Key Cloak initially in terms of diversity of contributors and end users. And so I'll need to go through the same due diligence to make sure the things that were raised before on the TOC with previous sponsors are satisfied since I'm taking it over secondhand. So I am in process of doing that and we'll provide an update as they come in. All right, thank you. Um... Caverno, we've heard from you a little bit. Ooh, actually, uh, there, you've got some helpful things from Derek, yay. So um, for Q&O, uh, I haven't started, we haven't started yet. Um, so we, I'm gonna talk to uh, the project folks uh, this week, uh, hopefully, and uh, get us going on a DD doc. And Cert Manager, yay, we talked a little bit about this before. Yeah, yeah, I'll I'll repeat the same. We had the key sure. meeting last week, and uh, and uh, yeah, we're moving forward as well. Okay, um, quickly for the um the the 
applying for graduation, Argo, I know it's still out there. Um, GRPC, also still out there. And Spiffy Spire, I know that you all have been working on being able to gather things together. Justin Cormack, yeah. passing to you. Yep, so well, Spiffy Spire, we had a uh, kickoff meeting with me and Emily and um, we, 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 to work on our plan. Uh, GRPC, I need to take off hold again because it was on hold because it wasn't going to happen before the elections, but I will get back to working on that. Okay. That covers us for our normal agenda in here. Um, I, I think I have a question for the group. Did this kind of public review of like annual sandbox projects work? I think it forced us to, you know, <laughs> prepare well, I guess, for sure. And I like the fact that uh, we were able to get the project, project maintainers uh, and have a conversation with them here. Okay, seeing big thumbs up all around. Um, one request that I had in the middle of the meeting and then kind of switched towards was like, talk a little bit about what the project actually does, because even though all of us actually know what it is, that is not immediately apparent towards the community overall. So um, I think in the future, we will set up a way to be able to make sure that the project knows that this is happening more than just like a week in advance and also directly inviting them again as well, so. Okay, project participation, good things. Other questions, pieces that we wanted to be able to go over? All right, seeing no one coming off mute and everybody yeah, being very happy in chat. Yeah, Dims. Yeah, the only thing that I could say is like, um, you know, there's a lot of services available through the service desk. So, you know, go look. Uh, at the things that are already provided and you know open up uh, tickets and make sure that more than one person from each project knows or has access to the service desk ticket and uh, the things that are available you yeah let's start by using all the things that we know we can and then uh, you know we can do more i guess yeah that's completely fair um we're always happy to help All right, seeing no one else come off of mute to be able to say anything else, I will send everyone back into your day. It's good to see all of you. Thank you. See you. All right, be well, everyone. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thanks, this was great. Bye, everyone. Oh, good, okay. You did like it. Good. Bye. All right, bye, all.